Next up, we have the one and only Rob Seitz. He's fished from Morro Bay, from the Mexican border to the Russian border, and he is still actively fishing. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, Joel. Can you hear me okay? A little bit louder. Okay, it's nice to be back, isn't it? Especially at the Liberty Theater, aren't those seats comfortable? <laughs> okay, I don't have it. I only have one new poem this year. I'm going to do it towards the end, but uh, I'm going to do some old ones here. Uh, uh, my family is changing because our kids are getting older. So this first poem I wrote, uh, I got the idea for it when I was sitting. Uh, waiting for my son's first football game to start. He was in fourth grade, and we were sitting there. I could tell, him he, tell he was nervous, and we were watching the kids from the other team show up, and he looks over at me, and he says, you think those kids on the other team eat farmed fish? <laughs> I was like, yeah, they look like a bunch of farmed fish eaters to me. So I call this football food. If it's true what they say, and you are what you eat, my boy, with his ling cod fueled tenacity and stamina, is going to go through your boy like a hot knife through partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. And leave him laying there like some disease-laden feedlot cow, staring stupidly, wondering what just happened. Now it's not my place to tell anyone how to raise their kids, but I hope someone will raise, will build their boy out of Lincod too, because my boy is going to need someone to play with. Thanks. Okay, this next one I wrote for my daughter, and she's, uh, she was young when I wrote it, and now she's 21 and leaving town to go start her own life. And we're going to miss her. So this is called Isabel. I wonder, little girl, if there's a chance, you'll forgive me for missing your Valentine's dance. I'd be there if I could, and I'll miss you lots. But it's crab season, and I got to keep fresh bait in my pots. I wonder, little girl, if there's a way we could postpone celebrating your upcoming birthday. It pains me to miss it, but I'll tell you the reason. You had the misfortune of being born during hake season. I wonder, little girl, if you'll understand why daddy won't be there to light fireworks on the 4th of July. See, the boat has been so long in the yard that I have to go fishing, though the decision is hard. You're growing up so smart, pretty, and strong. Most of the credit belongs to your mom, Sometimes I'm there and sometimes I'm not, but you're always foremost in my thoughts. In life, there's hard choices, but I hope you'll see it this way. Every day we're together can be our holiday. Thanks. I'm doing better on time than I thought I would. Okay, so uh, I started out fishing with my grandfather up in Alaska, gillnet and salmon, and uh, fishing a little halibut. Uh, and he grew up during the Great Depression, and so uh, when I think of sustainability, it, it comes from a perspective of uh, working with him, and you know, it was for him, it was. Uh, don't waste anything and maintain what you got. And 
you know, sustainability is a word you hear a lot these days, and uh, that's how I think of it. So I call this one Anchors, Change, and that 92 Dodge. On the ocean, everything's always moving, even when it appears to be sitting still. You'll find out, if you stick around long enough, that constant change can test your skill. When ocean and events move too fast, you'll need an anchor you can throw to buy time to take inventory, assess how to avoid the rocky shore. That old 92 Dodge is an anchor of sorts I've found. When life gets moving too fast, it ties me to solid ground. See, Grandpa's last truck was my first. When he died, he left it to me with a note that read, take good care of my truck, and it's the only one you'll ever need. So when I find myself thinking too hard and my autopilot can't see, I go for a ride in that old truck, and Gramps comes along to counsel me. He says, you know, boy, when you got your head up your ass, installing a transparent belly button might help you to see but pulling your cranium out of your rectum makes a lot more sense to me. <laughs> You'll find tomorrow comes sometimes, and it's better to be wise than bold. Take good care of yourself just in case you happen to get old. The thing about those radio fish, they're already in somebody else's hold. Turn down the volume, pay attention to the signs figure out where your boat's got to go. You'll see in time the fisherman who has the better luck ain't always the one who's driving the newest truck. Sometimes money's tight and flashy don't pay the bills. The less you owe, the less you need, the fewer fish you got to kill. So maintain what you've got. Might not be pretty, but it'll do. Remember, when it's a hard pull, slow and steady gets you through. And those fish, they're like you in that truck. You gotta take care of the sea, or you'll find yourself on the side of the road, thumb in the air, without a fishery. Truth ain't always popular, and life ain't just about collecting wealth. Let the idiots point and laugh. Just make sure you're true to yourself. Now, I don't always like hearing what Gramps has to say, but he's pretty much always right couple of times, if he wasn't already dead, I'd have invited him out of that truck for a fight. So it is, each generation grinds to the next. When my turn's over, I'll wish those left luck. And I'll leave them with a word of advice. Take good care of that old truck. Thanks. Okay, I, uh, I got one new poem this year, and I, I'm not really proud of it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not funny. I usually try to keep things light, but it's a poem about a new, uh, well, it's not so new, but uh, management scheme used uh, in our fisheries called catch air management or IFQs. Anyone know about those? Basically, privatizing a public trust, giving the rights to uh, harvest fish to individuals or corporations, and it's having an impact on uh, coastal communities and uh, the people that work in the industry. Uh, I'd like to say three things. Well, I already said one. I don't like it. Uh, the second one, you know, this is being driven, driven by environmental groups, uh, and like Rich said, and something I, uh, I'm trying to show is that, you know, fishermen have, uh, <clears throat> if you're a fisherman, you should be interested in uh, fishing sustainably. And, uh, you know, I, I've worked with 
these environmental groups, some of the big ones for a while. And uh, one thing I noticed, uh, they may have environmental or nature in their name, but if you want to know how they're going to prioritize, then you need to look at where they get their money and who's on their board of directors. Uh, to me, it's kind of insulting to think that uh, that someone who owns an energy company with a bunch of coal-fired generators is going to have more interest in fishing sustainably than a multi-generational, community-based, owner-on-board type fisherman. So anyway, uh, the name of my poem is called Priorities. Some so-called environmental groups have been at war with my fishery. Now I'm struggling to support my family. They've sacrificed results for fiction to attract funding from big foundations. Board of directors consist of CEOs from big corporations. Costly trial and error programs claiming ocean extinction prevention simply paved the road to hell when the only substance is college student good intention. The family-owned fishing boat is going to become past tense unless the quality of regulation starts making sense. When the science driving programs is political, requiring participation in the name of sustainability is hypocritical. Don't make fishermen jump through hoops to protect some pencil pushers promotion. Our future depends on truly sustainable use of this ocean. And if the solution involves privatizing a public trust, keeping ownership in the hands of those doing the fishing should be a must. With no caps on cost or consolidation, ownership ends up in the hands of big corporations when that happens, we've seen it time after time. Protecting the resource takes a back seat to corporate bottom line, leaving ocean health and communities in tatters. It's true what they say, that who fishes matters. If the small scale family operation becomes history, depleted oceans and coastal communities will be our legacy. Thanks. There was one thing I wanted to say about that. Uh, I borrowed a line from a, uh, an organization on the East Coast called the North Atlantic Marine Alliance. Their slogan is, who fishes matters. And I like that slogan because to me it implies that if we have the right people doing the fishing, then we have a much better chance of passing on the gift of a healthy resource to the next generation. So anyway, I want to end on a positive note. Uh, you know, the catch share is expensive. There's a lot of costs. Uh, need to pay for federal observers and lease quota. And, uh, uh, all, there's a lot of costs. Uh, about half of what we make goes to pay for these costs. And so, you know, w when we first transitioned to this form of management, uh, I told my wife that, uh, you know, we, I might not be able to afford to go fishing anymore. <laughs> I might have to get a land job. <clears throat> she panicked and uh, started working hard to figure out a way to keep me fishing, you know. So <laughs> she started selling my fish at uh, farmer's markets and, uh, well, uh, she's really good at selling fish. And uh, so I, I wrote this poem. It's called Direct Market Blues about that. This poem is a warning about the risks associated with one's wife selling one's fish. First thing you'll notice is romance's retreat. Then she'll start treating you like some piece of fish catching meat. I tried red roses to win back some ground. She said, I'm going to start paying you less if you're just going to throw money around. I waited at home in my birthday suit, but did I get my wish? She said, put that thing away unless it'll catch me some fish. <laughs> You'll start feeling like some bad, bad blind date, 
when she don't even fall for the old figure eight. I thought to myself, maybe kinky is how I should get. She said, the only thing you're tying up is the bag to make your next set. <laughs> I queried, perhaps role playing is what you wish. She said, pretend you're a guy that knows how to catch fish. <laughs> I said, give me a day off and we'll have some time to kill. She said, not this week, honey. You got orders to fill. If it gets much worse, it's occurred to me to turn her into for human rights violations and slavery at sea. I told her, it seems like my boat's the only reason you love me. She started talking processing costs and fillet weight recovery. Finally, I said, wife, how much fish do I got to catch before you'll feel comfortable letting me score? She pulled out her calculator, did some figuring, and said, husband, just a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you.